What's up, my dudes and dudettes? This is Dan the Beast 94 coming back at you with Q&As with Dan the Beast 94 slash uh, pickup video. So uh, I got two questions here. Um, they're both from Frank. And uh, there's actually one question with Frank and Porter, but they're similar in the same sense of the same question. So uh, Frank had asked, uh, you know, my opinions on the AEW pay-per-view. I thought it was good. Um, you know, maybe a little bit of backlash still with the whole Nyla Rose, uh, being like the first transgender woman holding a woman's title. Um, I, I did like the, uh, the scene with, uh, SCU, you know, basically them not trusting Daniels because they had thought he fell to the dark order. And then he ended up making his appearance. Uh, Colt Cabana debuted. Um... What else was there? Uh, there was Cody taking on um, MJF. Uh, Cody with that weird uh, neck tattoo now. Um, didn't really think it was the best business decision on his part. But uh, maybe if he st gets start, you know, gets something going with the neck all the way down to his sleeve. Sorry about the glare, guys. Um, yeah, and then uh, Jericho versus Moxley. Um... You know, that was one hell of a match. Uh, I was expecting Jericho to hold the title more. And uh, for a little bit longer, you know, lengthy reign. But, you know, nothing wrong with Moxley holding it. Uh, which leads me to my second question. Um, he believes, uh, do you believe the live entrances were their, their version of WrestleMania? I don't think it's their version of WrestleMania. Um, I think they're just trying to do something unique, you know, WWE usually something that WWE doesn't do on a uh, monthly pay-per-view. Maybe they're just trying to switch it up, but the way I see it, their their yearly WrestleMania should be all out, all in. You know, from you know, from when they first started and then just, you know, moving forward. Um I believe that is their version of WrestleMania um all out. But I, I liked it, you know. <laughs> the um the live entrance with Jericho, um, you know, having like this opera, you know, choir, you know, singing his own theme song. Um, that was unique. I liked it. Um, second question, which both, you know, uh, Frank and uh, Porter kind of asked uh, that had like a similar, uh, which were basically similar questions. Um, they had asked... Uh, do you believe it was Chris Benoit's, um, was Chris Benoit the reason for WWE going PG? Um, yes and no. Uh, I, I would say, you know, making it more family oriented, no. But in a sense of, you know, maybe like no longer, you know, being safer with the wrestlers when it comes to like taking, you know, no more headshots. Um, and just being very moderate and safe in the ring, I would say so, because I know when, um, they did further investigations and, uh, they looked inside Benoit's brain, Chris, uh, Christopher Nowinski actually, uh, checked out Benoit's brain and it looked like he had, he was in, you know, the brain of an 89 year old, you know, like an 80 year old, so... I think certain moves in the ring and how you perform them, um, I think that led to them going PG, but also just, like I said, making it more family-oriented. So, you know, just getting rid of certain type of gimmick matches, um, no more blood, um, you know, the use of uh, foul language being very limited. Um, I think it was just them making a business move and then just moving on from um the incident unfortunately uh but we'll see you know uh there's they're going to be having this dark side of the ring special about chris benoit airing i believe the 24th of this month so that should be interesting because benoit really hasn't been talked about in public in about 13 years um so we'll see i don't know
But uh, I got two pickups for you guys. Um, two DVDs. I got another 2006 DVD here. Uh, no Mercy. This had the uh, Fatal 4-Way match between uh, Booker T, Batista, uh, Bobby Lashley, and Finley for the World Heavyweight title. Uh, let's look at look back here. Got uh, Mr. Kennedy versus Undertaker. Have a false count anywhere match between Rey Mysterio and Chavo Guerrero. Uh, MVP made his SmackDown debut on the show. Have Gregory Helms versus Matt Hardy. Then you have the WWE Tag Team Championships on the line between Brian Kendrick and Paul London taking on Casey James and Idol Stevens. Idol Stevens, if you guys don't know, that's Damian Sandow. Uh, take a look on the inside. Comes with the insert. And it just tells all the match listings in the back. Um, if you guys want to pause that, take a look by all means. Uh, next one, going into my uh, 2009 collection, we have uh, the first TLC event. Here's the back right here. Uh, the main event for this match was a TLC... I believe it was the TLC match for the Unified Tag Team Championships. <laughs> um, Jericho and Big Show taking on Triple H and Shawn Michaels. A chair match for the World Heavyweight Championship, um, Undertaker versus Batista. Tables match for the WWE Championship, John Cena versus Sheamus. Obviously, this is where Sheamus won his first WWE Championship. Um, that caught everybody off guard. Uh, very good ladder match here for the ECW Championship, Christian versus Shelton Benjamin. And then they have extras. Um, DX celebrates after their match. And they have a TLC um, video exclusive. But uh, that about does it for this week's, um, today's video and this week's uh, Q&As. If you guys have any questions, uh, leave them in the comment section down below. And I will answer them from next week's video. Um, as always, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Uh, comments down below. And as always, DanTheBeast94. Signing off.